to the Allison Argram Show. And yes, I'm Allison Argram. Now, some of you may know me as Evil Nellie Olson, but tonight I am Allison Argram. And here on the Allison Argram Show, we talk about things that make you feel good. The movies and the TV shows that made us feel good and the people who made them, and people who are doing things now to make the world a better and more interesting place. And I got one tonight. Well, okay, some of you have been following me on Facebook and stuff. You know, you knew this was coming. You knew this was coming. Okay, what? Well, introducer, star of bazillions of TV shows and movies and stage, best known as my arch nemesis, evil, hard little, smells like a dirty horse, half bite. Yes, it's Melissa Gilbert. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, tired and, and I got, I showed you some of my fantastic bruises, not five minutes ago, I'm building a deck on my house and, you know, I've become the DIY chicken farm lady. You need to come build me a deck. Bob and I were just talking about getting a deck. His brother has a deck. He may have to come build I my would, deck. I, I would consider that. Um, it, 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 I, you know, I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you really want me to do it though. I have, I've made quite a few mistakes already and I have to keep I'm, doing things. Over I am learning. I'm framed by the idea of you with power tools and sharp objects. I know, so, I know. Well, today I was using a nail gun and um, nobody got hurt. Everything went fine. So it's, well, it's, it's all good. I, I think forever. And you, you talk about it in your book and it's a, you you have broken nearly every bone in your body and have every disease known to mankind. If you can catch it, if you can come down with it, if you have a reaction to it, if you can have it, have surgery on it, if you can break it or have it removed or replaced. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm bionic at this point. And I mean, I've had, and, and I finally, you know, I, I mean, I literally got everything. I just had COVID a couple of weeks ago and you are so cute. COVID. I'm like, ah! Everyone in my circle, you know, my, my kids, the grandkids, my mom, people were texting me and stuff. And you were the, you were the only one who wrote, please get better. <laughs> please don't die. <laughs> I was scared because you were the canary in a coal mine. It's <laughs> like, I was worried because you can't cross a room with like breaking your femur or something. And <laughs> it's was like, oh no, she's got COVID. No, please don't get complications. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a very easy time. I mean, I got sick. I had symptoms for about four days, nothing really severe. But fortunately, apparently this variant attaches itself and attacks the upper respiratory system less than the chest. So I just had a sore throat and a runny nose and a fever for four days. And then I was just exhausted. But now uh, clearly I feel fine. I'm building a deck. You sound completely normal. I actually, it's hysterical. As we're just saying, I have an actual cold. And I don't cold, even know what that is anymore. I talked to two friends who apparently caught the same cold because we're all like the same party. And we were all in a panic and, you know, two, two, things going up the nose and even going to the doctor and the thing. And it's like negative. How many negative tests do you have? And how many days? And we're all done. It's like, oh my God, we have a cold. I have to say this is this cold. is either a function of the world we're living in right now or we're really this old that we start our conversations by talking about our ailments. We are. We are. We are it's, it's like, oh, I, I, I did my back. I know. Wait, yes. wait. I love that. Does your toe do this? No, but seriously, Allison, it, we're coming up on 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm 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 60 now. I'm 60 and a half. I'm aware. I am 58. <laughs> You're 50. You, I, will all, I will always be older than you. Yes, that, you will, which that. brings me great comfort. I am, <laughs> I'm 58 and change, um, but I was nine when we met. Nine, ten, somewhere around there. You were, you were this big. You were actually I, this big. Really, so literally, I was. I fit inside a television set. You did, did you fit in fact, you did. But as I said, I, I could put her in my purse and she could chew her way out if she had to. That's, it's, oh, yeah. that is you. Yes, with especially that. with those big teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You were freaking adorable. But yeah, we've known each other longer than I really like. I mean, how many people have I known this long? I did. No, <laughs> I, did. I mean, I, you know what? The two people I've known this long are you and Leslie Landon Matthews. Leslie. It's so bizarre. Um, wait, we do have, they said they do this video. Okay, we got to show just a couple seconds of your famous um, screen test when you were a tiny squeaky little Geeber child with Michael Landon. But this is her famous screen test of Laura where she was like, it's just this big. This I'm a big. teeny. Right. Squeaky. 
action. I'm sorry, Pop. Sorry about what, half pint? Sorry for thinking you didn't care about Jack being drowned. <sighs> didn't care. Blame myself for not putting Jack in the wagon before we crossed. I, I should have taken into account how tired he was. I was just full of guilt for, for thinking he drowned. But you only said you were sorry we didn't have a good watchdog anymore. Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes people say things they don't mean. I just. I couldn't find the words to say it was in my heart, half pint. Oh. Oh, I love you. I love you too. Hey. You hear that? I hear what? Paul. Stars. Singing hallelujah. kids we would sometimes do impressions of each other we'd be like rehearsing the scene and then we'd like do it as each other and I was yes. always like oh pa <laughs> you know what the easiest way to do it then thanks by oh the way my God. the easiest way to do that is if you get two altoids I wish I had my purse here, but you get two altoids and they make the exactly perfect teeth now to do you you just have to put the altoids up here because remember your eye teeth, like, your eye teeth came down from your nose. Yeah. My eye teeth were coming down. I had to have four teeth. Both of us suffered braces yeah. hell. Mm -hmm. I had to have four teeth pulled in the back and everything shoved back. Me too. Teeth, apparently too big for my jaw or some insane thing. And, and that's so same, same. You had the, these two stuck out, but I had these were like coming down like twilight. Yeah, I know. I, I know. They yeah. were like fangs. I say, I have a mold of my teeth that the dentist did where they did a mold of my teeth. The before thing before they did it and yeah. i had the little cast and i had it on my dresser and the two questions that i was most asked about it is is this a prop from a horror film <laughs> is this is this a mold of of your dog because <laughs> it just looks like <laughs> not normal um so we both had horrid horrid ghastly dental issues yeah we use building. the mold of my teeth as a bottle opener <laughs> <laughs> and we were squeaky if i find the way i watch the first season it sounds like we're both on helium oh yeah a hundred percent although my voice pretty much didn't change it's still the same we did, was it someone once said you sound a bit like bart simpson and i did you do you can I do a do. really good bart simpson have you golly i don't know i i don't know if i could even try i mean uh -huh. It's so iconic. It's that. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't he right? something like this somewhere in right, here? You're right. It's you're in the right vocal range. It's a little yeah, scary. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> like something like this. I don't know. If that's it. If you with a cold is Bart Simpson. If <laughs> <laughs> me with COVID, that's what Basically. it is. And when you go, when you turn in Bart Simpson. Um, okay, so we're both. It's insane that we have lived this long, which is like amazing <laughs> in Hollywood that anybody's lived this long. Um, so you have you have book. You have book. I like book. I am um, reading the book actually right now on Kindle, even though you're going to give me one on, in July when I see yes, um, a proper autograph one. Um, I like it. I like it. I like it even better than the first one. I think I think you're even bolder and more like I'm just going to spill it now in this one than yeah, ever before. Pretty much. I mean, you know, there's not a not a not a ton left to spill in the sort of you know, kiss and telly sort of, or as Scotty McGregor called it, my K and T book, um, <laughs> <laughs> kiss and tell book. Um, it's not as 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 kind of I don't know lurid in that way. And 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 I'm I if you compare the two, I'm in such a different place in my life and myself exactly. right now. It's such a different, more settled, calm, no axes to grind, sort of a really peaceful place that it just it came out differently. 
That's and, really, and yeah, it's not the classic Hollywood blah, 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 kiss and tell. I made this movie and then I went out with this guy. It's like, okay, here's what's happening. And then Jack Here's that, where I am. And then I go that. into menopause. And then I had my breast implants taken out. And then I did this. And then I, and all of this was steps on the road to lead me to where I am now, which is this really sort of calm, centered, peaceful, happy place where I don't feel pressure to to do anything or be anyone other people want me to do or be. And I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you have to understand the pressure when we were kids, let alone heaven forbid teenagers, people talk about the pressure now, but even then the pressure on a teenage girl who is on a series to look a certain way, be a certain way, not just, oh, you need to be pretty, but you have to be this kind of pretty. You must be this kind of pretty. Kind of pretty yeah, after we have to fit into the mold of what we think pretty is and you have to do stuff that you know even on our show when i look back i think i was 15 14 15 years old and i was dating a guy in his 20s and i wasn't <laughs> even dating i wasn't i used to i like i would jokingly laugh it off and say well dean butler shaved his face and i wasn't allowed to shave my legs yet was kind of my way of <laughs> explaining true. the age difference but now, you know, coming through, when you look at it through the lens of who we are as a society now, that would never happen. You couldn't well, do it. At least and no one talked to me about it. It was weird. I mean, he's closer at least to your age than, than the actual Laura and Almanza was a full 10 years older than her, but it was the 1800s. And I think Almanza was like a young 25. I don't know. But it was it's a so... totally different time, but the 70s. And, and, and but the, the odd, one of the odd things was, is no one sat me down and said, now, listen. We got the guy who's playing El Manzo, but he's older than you. We're going to make sure you're comfortable. It was just, here you go. Yeah, we're like, okay, listen, you're playing this girl who by 15 in the 1800s had endured things like nobody lives through. So she was 15 going on 40 by the time right. she met this guy. Cause she'd like, oh, almost starved to death in a winter and a few things and was very old for 15. And people right. got married at 15 and 16 and 17. And he was, you know, had gone out as a really young pioneer when he wasn't even old enough to do it. And here's what's happening. This guy's not even as old as El Manzo. So, and he's nice, but we'll introduce you. We'll let you talk for nothing. None of that. Zero Zippo. No. All of that would happen no. now. They no. will sat the actors down. Now, now, nope, nope. No, Good no, no intimacy coordinators. Although we never had any, uh, you know. An intimacy coordinator. I know. Can you, I read about that now and I go, oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh mercy. Get in the bed. Yeah. Get in the bed. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the bed and eat the popcorn actually. Cause that's, that's Prairie 11. If we read the Bible and eat popcorn and then suddenly there's a baby. Well, when when um, Steve Tracy was cast as Percival, you and I sat there waiting because all we were told is, oh, Nellie's getting married. And I had no idea. And we sat there like the women of the village waiting to see who was the man I had been sold to. And this, then luckily, Steve Thank Tracy- Thank God, every, yours was gay. Every, I know, but every short guy walked us over, is that him? Ooh, is that him? And then thank God was Steve. And we're like, oh, you're nice. Okay, he's cute. Great, fabulous. Oh, he's gay. Okay, great, fabulous. Even better. Lucky, no threat. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Delightful. And, you know, I got lucky. We hit it off. But but it also was weird. We were shooting the um, madly in love kissing scenes and the bed scenes like really early. Like we barely knew each other and we're like in bed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now I've had that happen in movies as an adult, you know, as like you know, when I was in my twenties and thirties with leading men that I've just met and like the first scene happens to be a love scene and you make a joke out of it and you move on. But at that point I'm married. I have kids. I'm, you know, I know a few things. Um, but when I was 14, 15 years old and hadn't even been on a date yet, it was just a little uncomfortable. God bless Dean Butler. I don't know how he handled it. I really don't. He was, he was, thank heavens, a perfect gentleman and did his oh, yeah. best to try oh, to make it less terrible. <laughs> less like, terrifying. Oh yes. He's not really a very scary person. I mean, not, even, not, not a tiny bit. I think I'm scarier. Right. Well, you know, really in retrospect. Um, but yeah, and then the pressure to be a certain look at when you then, and then of course we came of age, it's the eighties, which is the height of TNA and sex comedies. And, and of course I was blonde. So I was supposed to be like the bimbo that didn't go well. I go to the auditions for the bimbo and then I'd open my mouth and then goodbye. Yeah, no, oh, it, does, just, it doesn't, it definitely it doesn't work. work. Like no, there was no, so no. much pressure that you have to, you were literally at one point made to, put in a position where you were made to feel jealous of my boobs and they weren't even that big then. So much so that I stuffed my dress with apples. Yes. 
we all <laughs> and they fell out bad drag and they fell, fell out, out bad drag fell out in front of the class and i didn't even call them boobs i called them bumps when am i going to get bumps mom bumps. It was Look. so insane, but it's, that was kind of pressure. And so now here we are in the other end going, oh my God, thank God that's not over. It's like, yeah, it's the whole, like, you know, concept, you can be in this movie. What was it? It was me, Mary McDonough from the Waltons, everybody from the Waltons, um, Susan Richardson, who's it is enough. Three of us were in the ladies room at some event talking about the dismal situation, the eighties casting and the stuff we were being called for. And, uh, Mary said something about God, I just I can't get arrested. I, I just not getting called in for stuff. And then Susan said, yeah, well, they're calling me for stuff, but they want me to be nude. And I looked up and said, I, I offered to be nude and they still wouldn't take me. <laughs> 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 Which was pretty much how things were. So it was so insane. <laughs> Completely true story. It's, oh. And that's what things like. So now we here we are. We're now old enough to go. Oh, we're not doing that anymore. You got all. No, the no one wants to see this naked anymore. Well, thank except for Tim. God. It's yeah. yeah right. And so now we're down, down. And now you not only have the book, but you have this. There's this whole thing. Modern Prairie um, website, Instagram. Who's he? What? It's like a whole branding thing. It has be well and cooking and gardening and whatnot, Melissa. Is this kind of like a Gwyneth Paltrowy goop thing for like women our age? It is a far more accessible version. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is not that far from our age. She's what? That's 50 right. Now? She's 50. Did she turn 50? She turned I think 50. She did. I think she just did. turned 50. Um, so it, it's not that, it's just more accessible and a little more, a little um a little more down to earth. Um, we're going to start, we're, we're going to start launching products soon. Um, we're starting with garden and kitchen stuff. And it's just something I've, I've sort of been mulling over and trying to figure out a way to do it. I just don't, you know, when I, when I slammed into menopause, with the exception of like you and Leslie and just a couple of my girlfriends, Sandy Peckinpah and my friend, Tina Carlisi and Cordelia, there really wasn't, there's not like a lot of information. And it's still something that people sort of go, oh, menopause. Like it's not even, I mean, they, 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 everybody tries to give you stuff to prevent it, which is insane because there's, That's you can't prevent it. So really what cool. are you going to, you're going to give yourself bioidentical hormones that could potentially cause cancer and put off the inevitable as opposed to try and find a way through it as comfortably as you can, because it is a natural transition. And how do we take care of ourselves, body, mind, and soul? So I, I, I really wanted to create a place where women um, who are perimenopause, like 45 and up, can discuss all of these things, but also share all of the other things we do. Just because we're older doesn't mean we're over. It, it's actually a really... Um, uh incredible time i think in a woman's life you know we've lived this long we've earned the right to our opinions we know what we're talking about we've been around long enough and this sort of mentality to just kind of push us aside because we're no longer ingenue material it's yes, just sir. unacceptable to me i i i you know i mean they they the, if you look at women older than us like helen mirren and judy dench i mean these are powerhouses Meryl literally, Street. literally last night, my husband and I were talking, Bob and I were talking, I said about like older women, you know, like, gosh, you know, over 40, hell, years ago was over 30. They're just kind of like, go away, go away. And he said, well, yeah, Helen Mirren and Judy Dench. I said, they're British. You yes, know? exactly. <laughs> but we also, I mean, we have Meryl Streep. You have, you know, Thank you God. have, you have leaders, um, but there's not enough of us. There's not enough of a celebration. And also when you talk about like advertising and selling products, Mm -hmm. Who do these people think are the shoppers? The 22-year-old girls? I don't think so. Well, I, I mean, always hope when they show the cream that's supposed to remove wrinkles and the model's like 19. And it's like, I, I got to tell you, one of my least favorite expressions on in the beauty world is anti-aging. Anti-aging. Why? Why anti-aging? How about nurturing and nourishing as opposed to anti-aging? Nurture yeah. and nourish what you have instead of trying to fix it and change it and back it up because it's inevitably going to happen. And do you really want to be some psycho in your 90s with like pockets of silicone injected into your face from trying to puff it up all these years? I just, it's not my, uh, clearly not my thing. It, yeah, because it tends to, in the long run, it doesn't really 
doesn't really work. There's all these staving off. And they don't tell you all the things that happen during menopause. Everyone talks about hot flashes. There's lots of jokes and comedy sketches and movies about hot flashes. They don't tell you. There's like 37 other weird things that, that start can happen. <laughs> Yeah, there's all kinds of things that happen to all different parts of your body and also things like. that happen to your your psyche. There are things that happen to you spiritually. And then it's actually just another transition that that once you get through it, yet again, women come out of it stronger. So let's right. celebrate that instead of, I, I, don't, I don't want us to hide anymore. It was like I was going through puberty in reverse. Like weird things that happened. I just made you do a spit take, didn't I? Yes. You did. Um, I made you spit. It was puberty in reverse. This stuff that happened when I was 14 and 15 was like happening, but I'm going, oh, this is wrong. Um, and then I was acne. like, uh, I had acne. What, 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 what the hell? And and the the not the insomnia thing, the waking up in the middle of the night, and then the weird dreams. And I was having, I was like, okay, wait, this is part of that. They're not talking. And then finally, I found people who were like, yeah, yeah, here's what's really going on. I'm like, oh my god. Um, the, yeah, the, the constant, the weird dreams. like emotional PMSy stuff. I well, I had dreams, and I remember my doctor said, "Oh yeah, are they really violent?" I said, "No, dancing, singing dolls." It was like it's a small world at like forty five oh, RPMs. Oh no, that's no right. I would wake up that's screaming. Worse. <laughs> it was like awful. But that's the thing. The fabulous Robin Tyler. I was talking to her. She said, "Okay, they don't tell you for the insomnia what you really need. You need like you need TiVo. You need like old TV shows." She said, "When you wake up, you basically you tell yourself you like repeat after me." I am going through a normal physical process and I have awakened in the middle of the night because this is what happens when going through menopause. It's normal. And I'm going to go to sleep again in five minutes. And then yes. you watch like reruns of Friends or I watch like Meerkat Man or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I love Meerkat Manor. And you know, it's a really great secret. I learned this raising kids. If you turn the volume down really low, so it's really soft, you start to strain to hear it and it makes you tired. I used to do that with my kids. And so I did, I watched little animal shows on that. And, and it worked me. She said it took weeks and weeks, like three days in of going, I'm having a normal reaction. I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. I'm like the <laughs> right, hypnotist exactly. dream. Or read I'm a, a book. <laughs> you read a book. Don't go on the computer. Don't go on the phone, but read a book book or a magazine. It'll it's knock you right out. And it, did, and it did work. And it was like, okay, so this, but she's like, yeah, there's all these weird things that happen. They don't even tell you. You have to like look up like the real books on menopause because they just go, oh, are you having hot flashes? And I'm like, no, I had one hot flash. I got hot one day and then stayed there for like five years. <laughs> right. Yeah. <you> just, <laughs> it's like, well, that's it's, weird. It's a, okay. very, it's a very individual process, but there are, there are so many different and better ways to get through it than to, to riddle your body with chemicals and try to stop it. It just, and some people do the hormones and some people actually wind up doing psychotropic drugs. They're doing like Prozac or sedatives or sleeping pills or combinations thereof. And that gets crazy. Yeah, that could be a real problem. I don't, I don't, I don't condone that. I mean, I believe everyone should choose their own way, but really we need to, we need to look at what we eat, what we put in our bodies, what we're trying to get out of our bodies. We need to exercise in a different way, maybe do yoga instead of running um, you know, there, there are things that we can do to stay, to stay physically sound. Um, but the, just this idea that we've all become doddering old women that have nothing to contribute is, is nuts. We and then it's so much like more. A, fate, a fate worse than death is to get old. It's like, you know, I love my doctor, but with medical interventions, it's like, less is more, less is more, it's good. You know, you don't right, like, exactly. like fix the wristwatch with a hammer here. And, it's, and that's the thing is that getting older being treated being medicalized and treated as a disease in and of itself like you are not just not supposed to get older it's it, it, no. right anti-aging again anti-aging anti -aging. <laughs> so this thing this i looked at the bottom prairie thing it does has cooking and it has gardening and it has you and it has a whole and health things and yes. it looks pretty and it's pretty it looks very pretty as well it is pretty we're very proud of our of our website and we're growing and expanding and it's really taking off and um, we'll see where it leads. You know, I'm, I'm very it, it, immensely involved. It's nothing happens without my say so or approval. And, and um, good, good, good. yeah, yeah. So we're not, we're not going to be, there'll be no steaming of vaginas or like inserting. Um, no, 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 there will be no candles that smell like my vagina or, or anything sweet. of the yeah. sort. <laughs> And the very closest thing that would happen would be like, this candle smells like my kitchen. You know, I mean, I can't even imagine. I don't, um, 
I, I, not that I'm afraid of talking about all of these things. I'm just not going to advocate for any sort of treatments uh, uh, physically of any kind. That's not where we're at. My partner, Nicole, and I are, are that's, that's not our bailiwick. We, more than anything, we just want to celebrate where we're at at this phase in our life and share with all of these incredible women what comes next and what they're doing. And, you know, there's also this emotional reassessment that happens. It's not, I said in my book, it's not a midlife crisis. It's a midlife reassessment. Okay, this is the last third. What are we going to do? Right. What do you want to do with the last third of your life? If you could do anything, because you can do anything. I mean, short of becoming an astronaut. What is it you want to do with your life? Shatner went into space and he's in his 80s. Shatner went into space. Um, it's nice. You're, you're, you're not doing the scaffolding building. It's now it's more like what's the what's the legacy kind of phase? Exactly. There's no need to be ambitious and crazed now. We can we can back off of that pedal, I think. So what do you want to do? What do you want? Now's the time to 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 leave behind the legacy. So what's the and, we're, and we're allowed to be proud of what we've done. We're allowed to stop for a minute and go, oh my God, did I do all of that? I did do all of that. <gasps> and like take a breath and actually appreciate what we've done. Yes. Like, absolutely. We're going too fast. It's a huge when we're young. accomplishment to stop, you know. And Tim says this to me all the time. You realize. Sweetheart, you've been um, a working actress for 56 years because I started when I was two and I never stopped. I still haven't stopped. So that's something to be celebrated. And it also enables me to go, eh, no, don't feel like that. I don't, you know, I just read a script for a film I, they sent me to audition for. And I read the script and went, eh, I, I didn't get it. It didn't, it didn't click with me and I wrote my agents and said thank you guys so much for submitting me but I the the material didn't speak to me I just don't I don't see myself doing this so we don't have to do stuff we don't want to when you're in your 20s and you're like young and hungry and you're trying to make the career it's like I don't really want to do this yes but if you do this it's a really good project and this guy is a director is going to be you don't just you have to do any of that you don't say no now we can say no we're at an age to a myriad of things and I think the great thing is for women our age is that we more than knowing what we want we know what we don't want yeah now you're up in the woods with um chickens and i remember when this started like well okay you said oh i got this little place in the woods and it's great because we're in manhattan which is super 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 big city so a nice break is cute little place in the catskills we'll go weekends and summer it'll be to fix her up or it'll be fun and then the pandemic hits and everyone's like ah, i gotta get out of here and half of new york and you're like oh funny we have a place to go <laughs> and suddenly you're in the woods and you're like i'm planting a garden wait i'm raising chickens and i was like are you getting a cow but then like <laughs> numbers went up and things got worse and i was texting going get the cow don't go back to just get the cow don't leave <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right and that's exactly you know we'd always we talked, Tim and I talked about having this sort of lifestyle, but because we were always going and, and on location and doing stuff, we never really figured out how to do it. And we just always thought maybe we will have uh, a caretaker on our property. If we end up having all of these animals, we'll figure out how to get there. We didn't know. And then the pandemic hit and this lifestyle that we had wanted became the lifestyle that we needed, we thought. Right, because you're going to have to have somebody like live there or check in because you're going to, oh, we're going to go once or twice a month and then we'll go like for July. Exactly. You're, you're going to like, well, we won't be there for five months at a time. So we can't plant a garden. <laughs> and now. <laughs> and, surprise, and I, you know, when the book first came out uh, and last month, I went into our place in New York City for three weeks because I had to do all the press and promotion and all that stuff for it, all the talk shows, all the signings, all that stuff. And I love New York City. I love, I love knowing that our little apartment is there. It's like the best little hotel suite anywhere in the world. It's a perfect little one bedroom pied a terre. We order from DoorDash so you can get any kind of food you want. We can actually watch streaming television because we have real internet as opposed to at our house where we have satellite internet. It's like a step. And you from can go to Broadway. And you can go to Broadway. And we go in for a couple of days, but for three whole weeks. I was like, oh, I want to go home. I just want to go home. And when I finally got home, you know, it was just, it was so nice to be able to just ugh, chill out and it's quiet, you know, and every day I end my day, I'm either knitting or cross stitching and just kind of be, I sit in a recliner. I have a recliner. Well, you, you said you got out of your overalls and threw on a dress for this because you I, were did. Out, well, I, I was in the back 40. 
I was, I was, I, yeah, well, I started this morning with my chicken chores and then weeding and then building the deck. And then, um, and then I made dinner cause Tim's rehearsing a play, uh, up here. And, um, so today was his first day. So I wanted to make sure he ate and we have to eat at a certain time. Cause we also intermittently fast. We're intermittent fasters. And so we have to eat by a certain time to be able to eat by the next time, the 14 hours later in the morning. And so I made dinner and then I took a bath and threw on a dress and here I am. And I'm <sighs> now chickens. You, you love your chickens. You've talked about your chickens. You wrote about your chickens. You love your little chickens. They're so cute. Are chickens gross? Is taking, I think of taking care of is it is it gross and disgusting or are they so cute you don't care? Allison, you scoop cat poop out of a litter box. Am I right? This is true. Or I make Bob I do it, but okay. <laughs> gets stuck to me. I oh, but I've also, I've also, I had uh, the cat that had a, my male cat years ago. There was, there was an anal gland issue. Oh, so you've expressed an anal gland. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to do that with the chickens. Veterinary Chick medicine. I use a cat litter scoop and I go mm -hmm. into the coop each day and I scoop out the night's poops and I throw them in a bucket and then I throw them in the, the stuff that accumulates in the bucket goes into the mm -hmm. compost and gets mixed in with all the stuff in the compost that I use for the vegetables the next year. It's, and it doesn't smell as bad as cat poop. It's much okay, better. That's good to know. Good to know. Albeit my chickens end every day with blueberries, fresh blueberries. I feed them, they eat all organic. They eat all organic and they eat all the vegetables and fruits that we have that are left over that don't go in the compost. And every day they get blueberries at the end of the day. So their morning poops are purple. So um, you have you have the fanciest chicken poop of any farm. I do. Around. I well, you know, my <laughs> girls are my girls are, are very special. I'm madly in love with them. I have one, Coco, who actually, if I don't go outside with the blueberries at the end of the day, comes to the back door and pecks at the door until I let her in to give her her blueberries. Like like a dog or cat. She is like very much like a dog. And she's the only one that my dog, we're trying to teach the puppy not to chase the chickens. Chicago. Mm -hmm. We have a new puppy and she's learning um but she's now decided that she likes blueberries too so l last night i sat outside and i gave coco two blueberries and then i gave chicago two blueberries and then i gave the chicken two blueberries and i gave the dog two blueberries and we had a perfectly lovely time i still think that you and i though it's, it's i've mentioned this i mentioned it earlier today so that um you and i would be like green acres and and i'm sorry i would be the darling i love you but give me park avenue um i'm just I, I i don't think i can farm i i said to bob during the pandemic a lot of people started farming we're getting chickens growing gardens and you were doing it i said i don't know that i can do raised beds i said but i'm more the urban survivalist i can rappel down into the abandoned supermarket and bring back the canned goods <laughs> there's value in that too there is definitely value in that too and you know you would do well in a zombie apocalypse i could totally do it i could find the twinkies i could do the zombie apocalypse but i just don't and know if you need to <laughs> and by the way tim busfield said as i was leaving today said tell ask her why she hasn't come to our house yet so we're probably this is the other end of the country i shall have to come over there more or less <laughs> Um, but while you're rappelling down and getting the cans, I'll take my crossbow out and I'll shoot a turkey and dress it. And then you can bring the canned goods and we can grill the turkey and we'll have turkey and canned and goods. And I have a great recipe for the stuffing and between the two, yes. Yeah, um, wild turkeys are not really good to stuff, but anyway. How do you cook it? wild turkey? They're more gamey and lean. So what they do you are, do with they them? They are. There's no legs. Way. There's no drumstick. Yeah, it's not. Just, it's not a roaster with all the fat that's been sitting in a pan. No, it's so just game, breast meat. Game you can only get, like you get like a breast cutlet and just kind of pan fry it. Is what our research told us. We haven't actually done this. You I do mean, it I'm like only... duck. Did you do it like duck, like magret de canard, like get a little like like a duck steak, kind of get it in the pan? Yeah, you could do it like that. Yeah, oh, uh, but we would good. we would kill it and cut it and do it ourselves if we had to we did do the research to figure out how to do it we haven't done it obviously oh, you no. haven't you haven't had to actually self i haven't shot anything turkey. with yeah. my crossbow except <laughs> for um the um bullseye uh, just but you, you are ready for the zombie apocalypse because you do have a crossbow oh 100 honey i have a pink camo crossbow <laughs> i do you because I won't People carry. I won't take many times. Like which cast members would do the best during zombie apocalypse? Clearly, um, you're. I think you are first. I'm totally ready. We even have the motorhome 
which we call the dressing room on the property for guests because it has two more bathrooms. Okay. So one bathroom in the house. And we had to have that for COVID when the kids would come up, they'd have to quarantine for two weeks before they could come into the main house, pre-tests, pre-vaccine, um, all of it. And so we could actually hitch that to my car if we needed to. And I could fully become like the zombie apocalypse lady. Excellent. Excellent. Now you were talking about Tim here. Okay. One of the things we have in common, married older kind of hippie dudes and marrying a guy who is not seeing little house on the Prairie until after you were married. Bob did not, he'd heard of little house on the Prairie. He says he'd seen oh, it with yeah. flipping channels, but he'd never sat down and like watched an episode of little house on the Prairie. And it was actually when we got together that time in um, Sonora for that reunion thing. The oh my God. That was already. That was 90 years something. Ago. Yeah, he and that's a hundred years ago now. We were married, and I said, "You haven't seen the show, really?" Because no, not really. So you know who any of these people are? Because no. And I said, "Well, you, they're going to be talking about Lord is my shepherd with Ernest Borgnine, where you climb a mountain and find Jesus, and he's Ernest Borgnine." And you, you, Laura runs across five states from Minnesota and finds a mountain. And Did you think he was Jesus? I thought he was I an he angel. Was oh, was he? Did an you think he was about? actual Jesus? I thought he was Jesus. Did I you? thought he was God. I thought he was just an angel. He turned into a dove. So it could go either way on that. So that was very Jesus. He turned into the dove. Interesting. But, but, but you're right, because then Jonathan, highway to heaven, Jonathan, angel. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So there's a theme. There's a theme. But when she runs up the mountain, and, and I said, you should watch this because it's snoring. They're going to be talking about that and have panels and discuss that endlessly. Thing. So start with that one. And he watched it, and he um, kept falling asleep. And he said, how did you stay awake to this um so i said well we'll find you a more exciting episode but then he got into it he started watching some of the funnier ones like the one with doc baker helps the old lady fake her death so her relatives will come visit and stuff and he's like okay i'm getting i like this he really is like he really liked richard bowl and kevin hagan a lot and he's like oh i'm getting and so now he's seen like a bunch of episodes and stuff and he thinks it's pretty cool um my husband had never seen it and then the first thing he watched was the pilot movie which oh, he still believes is one of the greatest movies ever made for television in the history of television. Um, he has such an appreciation for Michael Landon as a director, uh, being a, a really prolific director himself. Um, he's got hundreds of credits as a director and, and yeah. numerous repeats on, on different shows that keep having him back. And um, he, he knows what he's doing and he's directed a ton of theater. He's directed features. And he just loves Michael's work. And then when he realized that he was also writing, starring, and producing and directing, he just kind of went through the roof. So now, anytime, if he's flipping through the channels and it's on, he turns it on. Um, and he loves, he loves to watch it. And then he and, and I think Michael was Michael was very much the actor's director and a director's director. It's a, and that is the thing. I'm always sure. telling people, like, he did everything. He was doing everything. He was doing everything on the show. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's unheard of. Yeah, really ridiculous. He he they don't they don't they they broke that mold for sure. Yeah. He he was a showrunner before they called it showrunner. <laughs> yeah, showrunner star. Yeah. yeah. He was he was uh it was unbelievable. Like I I don't know how he did it because you know we went home at the end of the day and we went home when we were yeah. kids certainly and we and went home. We had holidays home. off and weekends and like yeah when yeah, got like home for dinner or chunks like, of summer and yeah we had yeah. we had time he went home nobody does home. that yeah that doesn't happen so yeah so he got into it he got into it because the directing is like so amazing who timmy yeah, or yeah no, he, oh, so timmy, oh timmy got into watching little house he got into watching little house so the directing not just is so the directing, amazing but he, he loves the performances too he yeah. really thinks that you know michael put together an incredible group of actors and he loves, you know, he loves to watch me and, you know, he gets all gooey and um, he cries watching all the time. Oh, wow. Oh, so he's been totally sucked into, he's a bonnet. He absolutely did not fall asleep ever watching an episode of Little House on the Prairie. He, he has converted to being a bonnet head. He, he is cries. A, Busfield is a bonnet head. Sure. <laughs> Timothy Busfield is a bonnet head. Yeah, oh, listen, no. let me tell you, he is such a fan and has a bit of a crush on Karen Grassley. Too. He really, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. I know such a stunning, gorgeous creature she is. And he he goes, Oh, there's my ma. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Stop it. Yeah. 
Well, now Bob has episodes where like sometimes he'd go, oh, I haven't seen this one before. And then he's like, who's that? Who's this? Now, what happened when you were filming this? And then, yeah, so it's like exciting now. It's like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there were the ones that we did that had that where Michael had a message that he wanted to deliver to right. the, that that had, you know, the, the socially conscious episodes. And those were the ones that people really glommed on to during 2020 in the summer and the great right. awakening we were going through when they remembered the wisdom of Solomon. And, you know, I'm wisdom of Solomon there. became a huge hit all over again. I look at my then, Instagram course- feed and, you know, Angela Bassett is tweeting, who knew a house in the prairie was woke? And I'm right. like, right. and then <laughs> Viola Davis is the same thing. And Jamie Foxx did the same thing. And I was like, I did, I did, I did. You're talking to the girl who had to try and rub the black off of Todd Bridges face. And I didn't want to do it. You know, I, I don't know if, I don't know if you knew this. I asked Mike, because they, they had the scene where I went, wow, you, you really are a real Negro person. First of all, I didn't want to say Negro person. Right, because it was like, ah, this was oh. the 70s, not the 50s, folks. We oh. were like, no, we don't say that. And I don't want to try. And, and I said, why? This is, I don't like it. Because you know, I didn't know how to express myself. I didn't know how to say that this makes me really uncomfortable. I just knew it was um, weird. And he said to Mike, said to me, we're trying to teach people something very important and I need you to be the conduit so once he explained that to me I was like okay I got it I'll do it I hated it but I did it Catherine McGregor told me that when you know as Mrs. Olson who was terribly racist and anti-semitic and pretty much hated everybody that wasn't her um when she was doing the scene where they were trying to keep the black guy out of church and she was like ranting and raving and said you know and, and Reverend Alden had said something about we're all made in God's image and she said but everyone knows God is a white man when she shot that scene, she almost couldn't do it. She kept cracking up laughing because if you recall, Catherine was a devotee of the Vedanta temple yes. in LA and subscribed yes. to an Eastern Hindu sect religion. And she said, you think that God's a black woman? <laughs> you know, in my world, God's a black woman, God's not a white guy. Why, what am I talking about? And so she said, get yeah, those scenes just like center right over the edge. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff was, it was hard. But when it was reframed for me, the way Michael said it is I'm tra- we're trying to teach people something then I I was okay with it well and that's the thing and I I was you know when I tormenting the stuttering girl I was constantly doing horrible things where I went you oh my you, god you made fun of the girl with the short leg you were mean to the stuttering girl you mocked the girl who cut off all her hair um you were just a you were a horrible human. And before I married Percival, there was that nice man who made the coffins that Albert worked for, who was Jewish. And Willie oh. and I said he had he had horns. He had horns. So, we were, so yes. we were anti-Semitic as well as anti the differently abled and well. disabled persons. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was really evil. And the the stuttering one got to me. I remember going, "This is this is giving me the creeps." Okay. Um, Katie it was so Kurtzman. Was that Katie Kurtzman? It was Katie Kurtzman. And and that's the thing. But when I did it, I went no because we are showing how awful people can be my job is to be as unpleasant as humanly possible to show exactly exactly and it worked people hated you people hated 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 you they still say things to me like that nelly girl who right you still (laughs) like oh you still speak to her (laughs) yeah wait your friends (laughs) i used to mention you when Bob told his parents we were getting married, and they did, they were like, you know, oh, well, well, she's an actress? What show was she on? Oh, well, oh, Little House in the Prairie, who'd she play? And he said, Nellie Olson. It was like the line went dead. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Awful silence, and finally his father said, she's not like she was on the show, is she? <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. 8,000 years later, we're still, and that's where, so both of us are getting that. I mean, people are still calling you half pint, and you're freaking 57. Oh, oh, 58, but thank you. Uh, I'll shave a year off for you. A few months, yeah. It's really, yeah, it's fun that uh, people still call me half fine. I did a book signing up here, actually, at Bethel Woods, where Woodstock was, um, mm-hmm. about a week ago. And one of the guys, I did a Q&A, and one of the men said, so, half pint. And everybody went, ha, ha, ha. And I went, no, that's my nickname. Please, please, <laughs> you feel free. That's what, yeah, there's right? a, there's, there's a group of people who will only call me half pint. And now that we're all adults, like the remaining uh, crew people who are still alive, if I run into them anywhere, go, hi, a half Melissa. And I go, no, it's okay. <laughs> half pint. It's fine. Well, it's like people sometimes will be apologetic and go, I don't know how to say this, but I I just, I I hated you. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Yes, you're too kind. Um, Because, yeah, it's the the guy. What would you say was our best fight? Oh, the mud fight. 
mud fight. I'm sorry. I shouldn't even call it the mud fight. We should just call it what it is, the cow poop fight. The cow poop and duck poop. Cow and duck and goose shit. Pardon me. Mm-hmm. Can I say that? You, on the show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was because in the winter, the, the wood filled with water and the ducks and the geese would come. And, come live and, there. and then in the in the fall, the cattle would gather and there and they would drink the water. Grazing and and they basically they didn't clean it up. They just went, well, this looks like a good spot to shoot this, and this got a hose funny. Yeah. and filled it full of water and mud. So it was, wet. It, yeah, it was no <laughs> bueno. And I still, Tim actually said to me, you know, you, she really is due an opportunity to cram a fistful of cow poop in your mouth. You totally realize that? You can see like slow mo. You have me had a hand comes around. She's like, mm-hmm. yeah. You Tim just... says that it's only fair that you should come here and have a handful of some kind of poop and shove it in my mouth chicken i I guess i I disagree because it was accidental but it did not look accidental oh it's totally first of all nobody told us that was poo i mean until we were in and then it was like yeah well but then remember when they were cleaning our ears out with like a special solution and i said why and they said well the the mud's really it's not actually mud it's really dirty you don't want that in your ears they're cleaning your ears out with hydrogen peroxide and water yeah the, um, the medic the set medic flushed my eyes and said did you get it in your eye and i said my eye she <laughs> shoved it down my throat i, I just don't. ate like the quarts of this stuff i think that was our that was our best the haymaker that first that first punch yeah that, that was not nice. country girls was a good one too that was good and then when i hanged you yes the hanging the the execution oh, and the dream sequence. Dream sequence. Yeah, that was okay, that was good. dream sequence where I have the the ringlets and the pit the petty the candy and I I <laughs> yes, I do remember yes. that. I do that remember. was that was sick and twisted and very, very weird. All right. Where do people get the book? I mean, I have the book. You're going to have the, now we're going to be at this thing. Anybody who is in shouting distance of Los Angeles, um, we're going to be in Burbank. Now you're coming in for the Saturday, just the Saturday or the just Friday? Just the day? Saturday on Saturday. July 2nd. Okay. I'm going to come in on the Friday and a bunch of us from the Prairie shall be there and you will be there on Saturday and we will be at the Burbank Marriott for the Hollywood show signing and selling stuff and there's like a group photo op and all kinds of things but it's one of the larger groups of Prairieites in a while. I think it's the biggest one that anybody's it's it's one of the biggest gatherings of us that there's been. I mean since like a Walnut Grove you know you know Kenny Lester's coming. Yes, and I know. And I think Karen going. is not coming. Last she's night, she got a gig. Got a gig. She's great. going up more to work. She's got work. She's doing on Golden Pond on stage. She's doing uh, Catherine Hepburn part, yeah. Uh, but, 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 but there's a lot of us are going to be there. Linwood Boomer will be there Friday night. Coming. But only Monday. Friday night, and he's donating everything he makes. Yes, because he's uh, like Linwood. He's like that. So yeah. it's going to be a whole crew. So you will have the book there. Um, they can I will have the, the book. book there. The book is available from booksellers all over the place. It's on audio. Um, you can buy it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, your local independent bookstore. It's called Back to the Prairie. A Home Remade a Life Rediscovered. And then if you're interested at all in the Modern Prairie stuff, you should check out our website. It's um, www.modernprairie.com. And you're always looking for submissions of modern mavens. And a modern maven would be someone in your life who you want to promote, who you want us to promote, whose work in whatever field, whether it's the arts or crafts or health or wellness or anything, um, you submit them no, and then we vet them. It's a participatory them. thing. It's a, it's a group 100%. participation thing. We read all the emails ourselves. We send them back and forth to each other. And we really want a, as much community engagement as we can get. So it's, it's definitely worth checking out, I think. And um, it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And I'm very excited because once we get to the end of summer too, we're going to move into canning season. And it's fall. Yeah, all the stuff that's coming out of the gardens, we're going to talk about canning and preserving and sharing and all that stuff. And Christmas arts and crafts. Uh, arts and crafts, lots of crafting. Um, and then we'll have clothing um, and we'll have our own product lines coming in soon, mm-hmm. soon, soon, really soon. We actually have a photo session next week of a lot of our new products. So yeah, okay. Be yeah. Okay. 
Well, okay. Well, say hi to Tim and the dogs and the chickens and the bears. Bears. I, I have, I have, I have a bear. He attacked our trash can twice. Twice attacked our trash can. And we have, a, um, we have a trash can that is bear proof, and ah. so the bears tend to come and they'll pull the trash can all the way across the yard and knock it into a bunch of stuff, but they haven't gotten in it yet. What kills me is they don't realize that there's a compost. Like that's you, if you blow on the composter, the lid comes off and it's all food. I, but they, they and I feel bad for the bear because we'd thrown away, there was some leftover old chicken oh, stuff and that's why the bear bad. came. And yeah. the problem was we'd also thrown away the cat litter. So the poor bear like rips this lid off the thing, the plastic and shares it all, throws it down and go and, and goes to get the chicken. There's a bag of cat litter. So he like left and then came back another time. <laughs> And that, the okay, same thing. I've, got one, <laughs> I've got one urban story for you. When I lived in New York in the 80s, when my son Dakota, who's now in his 30s, was born, I lived on West 12th in the West Village and the bottom two floors of a four-story brownstone. So outside our living room was where we would leave out the trash and we would leave you know, trash bags in the trash cans and then people would come and collect it. And oftentimes, if we left stuff out there, like furniture or shelving or anything, we didn't have to have it picked up because people would come and just take stuff. And we would often see like the homeless people would come by and go through our trash and grab stuff. And I was sitting in the living room and I was looking out the window and I watched a guy, homeless man, come up and go through our trash cans and grab a big bag of what felt like soft clothes. And it was a bag of dirty diapers. <laughs> and all I could think was, oh, this poor dude. And I, I, was, I was nursing the baby at the time, so I couldn't exactly run out and go, here, don't take this money instead, or let me go take you grocery shopping or something. Right. It's and like, by the time I actually could get to the door and look out, he was long gone. And I like to think was when he opened that bag, how disappointed. It's like you want to leave a note on the trash can. Sorry. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> sorry. This is my son's dookie. <laughs> bad for the bear. But I am putting some netting up because that there's a deer and some very aggressive squirrels. I only grow, I grow like tomatoes and they're, they, they come for that. Aggressive squirrels? Very aggressive squirrels. They like, they show, they're like rapping on the window. Feed me. Well, you um, would cause... not handle it up here at all with the porcupines and there's rattlesnakes. I had a guy to move a garter snake from the deck we were working today and just kind of tossed it out of the way. And foxes, wolves, um, coyotes, eagles, owls. Coyotes we got, and I love the snakes. All right, say, I got to go. We have to say, say hello to all the animals. Run along. Um, don't break anything or hurt anything or staple your foot to the deck or anything, please. Uh, and I'll, um, I'll see you in like two weeks. Yay, I can't wait. And please give my love to Bob. Oh, look at I us. A whole picture of us. Boobs, yes. <laughs> Boobs on one of us. One of us did oh. not have them, still doesn't. Used so, to, but they came out. So there you go. I, yeah, no, you still have them. I have organic, organic boobs. All right. So thank you. This has been the Allison Argrim Show. And that's Melissa Gilbert. And I'm Allison Argrim. I found my way home across the ground.